All right, problem 11, we have a carnival game that allows the player a choice of simultaneously rolling two, four, six, eight, or 10 pair dice. Each die has six faces numbered one through six respectively. After the player rolls the dice, the numbers that appear on the faces that land up are recorded. The player wins if the greatest number recorded is one or two. How many dice should the player choose to roll to maximize the chance of winning? Okay, so I mean, I mean, I assume this problem is maybe they're trying to kind of confuse you, but um, let's say if you just had a one die, your chance of, um, if you, their chance of getting a one or two as being the highest, it's basically just one out of three, because you can get a one, two, three, four, five, and six out of the six choices, um, one and two, two out of the six. Um, so, you basically just want to roll as few numbers die, dice as possible because the more dice you roll, the more chance you have to roll um to get a higher number than a one or two. Now this would be this would be a good thing if the probability was you know above fifty percent. But since this is like you know one third chance, you want to basically just it doesn't it's not going to help to roll more dice. You actually want to have as least dice as possible. So an answer would just be A. Grade 12, a school is having a contest in which students get the number of candies in a jar. The student who gets, whose guess is closest to the correct number of candies in the jar wins a prize. The number of candies guessed by male and female students is shown in the back, back and plot below. Okay. So which of the following statements is true about the distributions of guesses? So, looks like they wanna see if you can recognize what um, shape each of these are. So um, let's recognize what a back-to-back -back stem plot would be. So for the females, you know, again, it's like six, seven, eight, Da, 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 all the way to 14, let's say. But we look at this, we, we want to look at it like this. So the female distribution is skewed to the left. It peaks like, you know, around the 11s. Or I guess the 110s more specifically. So it would be kind of do something like this. Have a tail going off like that. It's for the females. Now the males is actually skewed to the left too. It's just reflected because um, it's still running from you know lowest the six up here to the fourteen, but it's just it's just flipped over, it's just mirrored. So um you know it's still doing it's still skewed to the left because if you were to flip this over, like that, it would still you know be pretty, pretty much kind of the same uh sort of shape as the females, like maybe the um. The male would be maybe like a little, this little it looks like the, the peak is a little farther. So maybe a little more, the peak would be a little further to the right, but still has a tail running to the left. So it's skewed to the left, or both of them are skewed to the left. So let's see what should these would make. So they're not skewed to the right. Okay, so the answer would be A. The distributions of guesses for males and females are both skewed to the left. That would be the best answer. Answer would be D. The manager of a car company will select a random sample of its customers to create a 90% confidence interval to estimate the proportion of, cust of its customers who have children. Of the following, which is the smallest sample size that will result in a margin of error of no more than six percentage points? Okay, so remember the margin of error is basically like the, um, I mean, you have the point, when you're making a confidence interval, you have the point estimate plus or minus your critical value times the standard deviation of the statistic. So the margin of error is this left over part. Basically how much you could deviate from the point estimate plus and minus. Okay, since we have proportion, the, the formula for the margin of error will be Z star times the square root of P times one minus P 
over n. And again, you have a formula sheet. You don't have to memorize this. This will be in your formula sheet um, if you forget it. And so we're told that the, um, the margin of error has to be no more than six. Six has to be the greatest. So we have to find our critical value for a 90% confidence interval. So going to our you know, formula packets, here it's, it's easier to see. If you, you want to look for where you have 5% to the left or 5% to the right, and, or sorry, not from here, but in here. 5%, the closest is always a 5%, somewhere around here. So like around, like here and here. So it'll be about 1.645. Now you can also use your calculator. If you wanna use, if you use the inverse norm function, you go distribution, inverse norm. And the syntax is just to enter the area to one side. So 0.05. And then a standardized normal curve mean of zero standard deviation of one. So again, you get about six, 1.645. Okay, now we're not given uh, any um, previous information about what the proportion could be. So we are gonna be conservative and make our proportion 0. 0.5. So 0. 0.5 times one minus 0. 0.5, which is 0. 0.5. And what we just have to do now is solve this equation for n. So um, let's divide both sides by 1.645. 0. 0.5 times 0. 0.5, 0. 0.25. Undo the square root by squaring both sides. So you have that squared. And what you could do is multiply both sides by n. So you get n times that whole thing. And then what you have is 0.25 over here. And so what we could do is just divide by this quantity. Divide by six over 1.645 squared. and use your calculator to do the work. So let's see what we get. So six divided by six, four, five. 0.25 divided by 13.30364. And from here, we would have to go ahead and Then I got this weird decimal, so that can't be. Oh man, I just re I okay, so I made a very uh, this is actually a good mistake for you guys to see. Um, I didn't convert the percentage points to margin of error. This has to be as a decimal, so this six should be a point oh six. So let's fix that, 0. 0.06. So this whole thing, 0. 0.06. So that point, so that should be 0. 0.06 because we're talking about percentage. Yeah, that was, that's a good, this is a good mistake because um, stuff like this can slip your mind easily as it just did here for me. So let's redo this. So 0. 0.06, 0. 0.06 divided by 1.645. In that group, square that and do 0 0.25 divided by that whole quantity. 0 0.0013306468. Oh, and so we get n to be about at least 188, or n should be greater than or equal to 187.92 ish. And so then, the answer will be D, you need at least 200. All right. 
All right, 14. Which of the following statements must be true about the data sets A and B displayed in the histograms above? Okay, so well, these are interesting. So um, looks like we're looking at measures of center and spread. So the mean of data set A is equal to the mean of data set B. Um, no, because the mean of data set B will be somewhere in the middle since it's a metric. And this is not going to be there because it's doing the opposite. So not that. The median of data set A is equal to the median of data set B. Um, This would not be true as well. And this is kind of a interest. This is a this is a um this is a good one to think about because um we don't know exactly what the um values are in here. So like remember with a histogram, it just gives you an interval of values. So it could be, but the thing is, um, since this is not a continuous curve. You know, like we have values between 30 and 40, 30, but less than 40. So all of these could actually be like 31 and none of them could be like 39 or 40. Um, so we, we're not sure exactly how the distribution is, um, how each um, interval has its values distributed within. So it can't be, it's not necessarily B, it could be, but it's not B for sure. Cause this is saying it must be true underline it's a big deal on the range of data set a is equal to the range of data set b again that same reason because again we don't know if the lowest value here is indeed 10 and that the high and this goes all the way up to six we don't know that it's remember this is a histogram all like all the values in here could be 51 or 50. so this thing could go from like like 15 to 50 because remember it's, it's a range that's an interval of value, so not C. The standard deviation of data set A is less than the standard deviation of data set B. Um, no, it would actually be the opposite, because this is more spread. And so that leads to E. Yeah, so it would actually be E, because the data, standard deviation of data set A, this has more variation. So it would actually be E. Our answer would be E. That's the one we could say for sure, because just because of the of how um this one is dense up in the middle there, so uh, there's less variability.